Hey, hey, everybody. Happy Thursday. I'm always adjusting the camera, and it looks like I put the camera on the wrong side again. Maybe not. <laughs> Hello. Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a great week. Um, I am coming live to you on Thursday this week because my kids have the day off from school tomorrow. And as you moms know, it's crazy town um, when kids are home. And I just feel like I can't focus. Today is extra quiet because the dogs are at the groomers too. So I am home completely alone. It's very odd. So we'll see how today goes. Hello. It's good to see you guys jumping on. Um... Let's see, I am really excited about today's projects. We are using the Home and Garden Bundle. The Home and Garden Bundle is so cute. My favorite kind of image. Um, you know, the black line where I can use my blends and matching dyes. There's no fussy cutting today, guys. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so I've got um, three projects and then I've got two additional videos for you. Um, so I'll post one probably tomorrow and then another one maybe Monday. Um, so I just couldn't stop. There's just so many possibilities with the stamp set. All right. Well, it's good to see you guys jumping on. I'm going to run through a few things. Um, and then I'm going to show you the in colors, the new in colors and compare them to some old colors and some current colors. I love the new in colors, guys. I love them. Okay, the first thing I want to tell you is um, the New Horizons PDF, um, All-Star Tutorial PDF. What's today? Is today the 7th? I haven't sent it out yet. I've sent it to subscribers, but nobody else. I'll send it today if you've ordered in the last seven days. I will send it to you. You can get this for free when you spend $50 um, or more online with me at stampinup.com. It's 12 tutorials all featuring the New Horizons bundle. Mine is a, a shaker card. Well, is it shaking? Yeah, there it goes. Kind of like an hourglass. Look at that. Um, but the other projects were designed by other demonstrators. So you kind of get a variety of styles and types of projects. Um, we had a blog hop yesterday. I, had an, I have an additional card there for you. If you didn't catch it, you can just go back one blog post and you'll see it. Um, this is also available in my PDF store for just $15 if you are interested in just the PDF. Okay, there's that. Um, my two, oh no, let me tell you about this. So today's the last day to sign, to, to, um, subscribe to Club Create. As you can see behind me, I've already started working on it. Um, you only have a few hours left to subscribe. And if you don't subscribe by the end of today, there, like, that's it. I, because of, it's a subscription, I can't just add you in and it's just weird. So if you want to be in Club Create, <laughs> I sound like that. <laughs> Have you guys watched that show, Resident Alien? If you haven't watched it, you need to watch it. It is so dumb, but it is hilarious. But that that's how I was talking. He speaks like in single word sentences. Anyway, if you want the <laughs> Cactus Cuties Club Create kit, today is your last day. If you're already subscribed, then you're good, okay? But if not, today is the last day. Tomorrow, starting tomorrow, I'm gonna show you the next kit. It's all new product from the new catalog. Um, Club Create, I'll add the link here when I'm done, but you can also go to my blog at the top um, and click the Club Create tab. It's a subscription. It's $39 a month. It includes about $20 of product every month, five make and takes, video, PDF, and shipping. And then if you stay for six months, on your sixth month, you get $25 in product credit of your choice. Okay, so then I also have two classes to go this month. And as you guys know, it's the last chance list is out, which means the annual catalog, um, this catalog right here, is retiring at the end of the month. Well, okay, May 2nd is the last day. Um, and like everything is selling out, mostly stamp sets. And it's been kind of crazy trying to do a class in April. Um, I designed this awesome class I loved with the birds and branches bundle, and then it sold out. <laughs> So the class is still available for those of you who have the Birds and Branches bundle already. Unfortunately, there's none left. I ordered for everybody who's registered for the bundle. Um, I was able to order them before they sold out, but I, I, I don't have any more. I don't have any options. I don't have any um, ways to get any more bundles. So to order this class now, you have to have the Birds and Branches bundle that looks like this. Um, you also get a free stamp set from a celebration, old stamp set, not old, they're brand new, well, you can't see, but they were from 
um, this last celebration. And you'll get that free in your kit if you want it. Um, you'll get two packs of paper, two quarter packs of designer series paper, and some opal rounds. That class deadline I have, um, well, I might have lost my little post-it note. I thought I saw it right here. Yeah, here it is, um, April 25th. But I might turn that off sooner. Um, it depends. I'll let you guys know. I'll give you a heads up. But if you want to register for this class, please do. But you will need that bundle, and I can't order and order them anymore, unfortunately. You know, when they say the last chance list is while supplies last, they aren't joking. Because also, my other class to go features this awesome paper right here, and it is sold out. Luckily, if you're registered, I have paper for you. I have a couple extras. So there's like only a couple spots left for this class and then it will turn off because I can't order the paper anymore. Um, the hand penned stamps are available. I had a bunch of dies, but they have already been spoken for, but they're in the new catalog. So if you buy this um, class option one, you're only gonna get the stamp set from here on out. If you've already registered, what was the date I said? March 30th, if you order before March 30th, I have dies for you. After March 30th, I don't have dies for you. Um, but you can order them starting May 3rd because they're in the new catalog. Um, but this class is, it features the um, Shaded Summer stamp set and the hand pen DSP, which is sold out. Um, so only a couple spots left in that because I actually had uh, several packs on my shelf. Um, it's sold out, I had ordered for everybody already. Um, but I have extra, a few extra packs on my shelf that are unopened. So I have just a couple spots left for that. Okay. And then I'm going to definitely turn that off because I, I can't get that paper anymore. Okay. Let's see. I think I need to show you guys the end colors. I'm so excited. I tell you guys this every year. As soon as the last chance list comes out, as, as soon as the new catalog comes out, which looks like this then this one is dead to me. Everything in here is dead to me. I'm like, done. I don't I didn't want to look at it. <laughs> I don't want to see it. I only want the new stuff. So I've kind of, like my brain is kind of in that mode right now. Um, there's some amazing things still in here, um, but uh, I have all the amazing things already that I want. So now I want the new catalog. <laughs> but it'll be here. It'll be here shortly. And we still have the spring catalog. There's some amazing things in the spring catalog too, which is what we're using today. But let me turn you guys around and show you the new end colors. Speaking of new and upcoming, um, these end colors are brights. Um, we have four different color families in the Stampin' Up! color wheel. We have brights, subtles, neutrals, and regals. And the brights are always my favorite. Um, then we have these these in colors that come um, and they only stay two years. Well, if these in colors had to fall into one of those family colors, family of color, color families, uh, they would definitely be brights. They are gorgeous. These two, we were all saying were blues. However, in my mind, they are purples. I'm gonna show you compared to Gorgeous Grape in a minute, and then it's gonna make it look blue, which is weird. But I'm telling you, when you play with these, they look purple, okay? So this is Orchid Oasis. Uh, you guys, it's gonna take me a while to get the names right. I have the ink pads right here, let me pull them out. Orchid Oasis, yes. Then the darker one is Starry Sky. And these two, I really think were created to be together. <laughs> Look at them, they go so well. I feel like this one is just a lighter version of that and they coordinate beautifully. This is Sweet Sorbet. Reminds me of, um, well, Poppy Parade, which I'll show you in a minute, but also maybe like strawberry, not strawberry slush. There was another one years ago. I'm trying to think of what it was. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue. Anyways, it's like a, like a pinky red. Uh, I think, I think. Now this one 
is called Tahitian Tide, and it is just like Tempting Turquoise. If you remember Tempting Turquoise from a long time ago, I loved that color. And then Parakeet Party, I love that name, is um, very much like Lemon Lime Twist, okay? So let me show you in comparison. Now remember, things on your screen do not look like they look in person, okay? This is the old Lemon Lime Twist. Can you guys see how close that is? This one is actually brighter than Lemon Lime Twist. Now, now remember, I pulled this out from the back of my scrap drawer and I'm identifying it as Lemon Lime Twist. Nowhere on here does it say Lemon Lime Twist, but it I know it is because we didn't have, we've never had another bright green color. This Parakeet Party is greener than Lemon Lime Twist. I think Lemon Lime Twist is more yellow. You guys, you'll have to correct me because I'm not a I'm not a color expert, but that's what it looks like to me. I think, you know, I love lemon lime twist. I know there's a lot of you out there that love lemon lime twist. I love this more. This is even more fresh and bright and beautiful. So very close and exciting because we all love lemon lime twist. Okay, now here is Tahitian Tide. Now get ready for this. Look, tempting turquoise. Look at that very close, very, very close. This is darker. Now I'm looking on my uh, iPad and they look identical, but they are not. This one is, you know, I don't know how to describe, a little duller. This is a little brighter. A li this is like you are in the Caribbean. No, you are in Greece. And this is what the top of the buildings look like, you know, in Gre on the Greek Isles where it's white and the, the roofs are the beautiful turquoise blue. That's what that looks like. So Tempting Turquoise has held a special place in my heart, but I'm sorry. I love this one more. It's brighter. Very, very beautiful. They look identical, right, Kimberly? When I look at it on the screen, it looks, let's see if I get closer. I mean, they are very close. This one almost is more, I don't know how, if my mom was here, she'd be able to describe it. Muddled. That's exactly, Terry, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's a little more muddled than this. Yeah, you can't tell on the screen at all. They look identical. See, that's what I'm telling you. You guys need, when the new colors come out, you need to order a variety pack so you can compare them to yourself. Now, here, here is Poppy Parade, and this is Sweet Sorbet. Do they look identical? No, this one is, this one is more like red-orange. This one is more red-pinky, okay? Both beautiful. Um, and if I didn't know I would have no I think this one is just it's so hard to describe I don't know they're beautiful they're they're in the same family for sure this one's a little maybe less bright than Poppy Parade okay um oh here I have this pulled out too this is Coastal Cabana I was going to show you that next to Tahitian Tide not, not even close so we don't have Tempting Turquoise anymore, but we do have Coastal Cabana. They are very, very different. Much more green, Coastal Cabana. Okay, now here are those two lovelies that go together. Starry Sky and Orchid Oasis. And I will say that when I was playing around with my new products this week, they are, I mean, I really feel like they are the same color, just different shades. Now I may be wrong. But even the markers, even the Stampin', I mean, the Stampin' Blends are very hard to tell apart. They, they just go together so well. And I've said that before. Sometimes I'm like, meh, with a color. But then when I see it with another color, I love it. And that's how these two are. And I'm not a big purple person, but man, I love these. Now, in my mind, when I look at this by itself, I'm thinking it's very gorgeous grape. But then look, it's not at all. Gorgeous grape is much more purpley. But then Night of Navy is too navy. <laughs> so it's somewhere in the middle. It is um, it is a blue, but it's a purple blue, I guess, right? This is Gorgeous Grape right here. And then this is Highland Heather. So Highland Heather, Gorgeous Grape, um, starry, starry Sky, Night of Navy, okay? So very just different. Like I didn't even realize we didn't have that blue. Like it, I don't know. It's just, it's 
it's beautiful. When I'm playing with this one, I also feel like, oh, this is like Highland Heather, but it's nothing like Highland Heather. Look at it. It looks totally blue here next to Highland Heather. But then you put it with, with navy, it looks, to me, it looks more purpley. I don't know. You guys are going to need to play around with your colors. And, and it also, it also depends on your lighting too. All right. So with that, I want to tell you about In Color Club. Um, I used each of the colors to make the same card using the Sweet Songbird. It's a new bundle in the catalog. Cl um, in Color Club is something I do every year when the new catalog comes out. It lasts five months. And each month, you get a kit in the mail that has everything for one color. So like maybe your first month is um, Sweet Sorbet. You would get um, a pack of the cardstock. You would get a ink pad, an ink refill. You would get the Stampin' Blends. You would get the Stampin' Write Marker. You would get the ribbon. You would get a bolt of the, the twine. Did you hear angels singing when I said the bolt of twine? I'm so excited about these twines. Um, okay, you would get that. Um, you would get the DSP that matches it. There's the DSP look. Hello, it's a plaid, it's a stripe, flower, and a dot. I mean, what more could you ask for? Plaid, stripe, and dots are my favorite. Okay, you would get all that. The pack of cardstock. Then, I feel like they're, I'm missing something. I have my list right here. Cardstock, ribbon, ink pad, ink refill, marker, blends, DSP, bolt of twine. Okay, then, you get a handmade card for me that looks like this. Then you also get a bonus embellishment. Every month I'll, oh, these. No, no, these come, these will come the last month. I'll tell you why in a second. You'll get a bonus embellishment. Each month you'll get something fun and different that's a surprise. Um, on the last month, you're going to get a full pack of these as well. And the reason I'm not splitting them up each month like I'm doing the other things is because they're little tiny pieces and you're going to lose them. So I'll send the full pack on the last month. Um, and the last month, I'm also going to send you some of this DSP because this is the T Boutique Designer Series paper and it uses all of these new in colors as well. So that is In Color Club. Signups are open through April 30th. Um, you won't be billed until the first. You'll get a, an invoice every month for five months on the first. Um, and it's all of that is $62 um, plus $8 flat rate shipping. Um, there was something else I was going to say about that, and I forgot what it was. I don't know. Anyway, the full write-up, the full write-up is on my blog. Two days ago, I posted it. So if you're interested in In Color Club, go sign up. You don't have to pay anything now. Oh, I know, five months. You'll be charged, you'll be sent an invoice on May 1st, June 1st, July 1st, August 1st, and September 1st. And you'll get a, a kit each month. And by the end of the, of the five months, you will have all the In Color stuff and five cards and five bonus embellishments and the DSP, and the um, dots, a lot, okay? So sign up for that. You don't, I can post the link for that on my blog because it doesn't include um, a link, a payment link. So if you wanna sign up, just click that link on my blog. Now that, oh, I was gonna show you this too. Look, these are stylish, the stylish shape dies. We've all been sad that our stitched dies are gone, but now we have these new ones and they're very cute. That has nothing to do with this. I just wanted to show you guys. Okay, so that's In Color Club. That'll be open through the end of the month. Um, the other thing that is new is Club Create. Now, today's the last day to subscribe for Club Create April. Club Create May will feature the Cup of Tea Bundle which is in the new catalog and it's gonna use that Tea Boutique Designer Series paper. I love it, look. I mean, I love it. Love, love, love. So I designed the projects. I filmed the video this morning. The PDF will be out in the next couple of days. If you want this Club Create kit, don't sign up today. It starts tomorrow, okay? If you sign up today, you're gonna be getting Cactus Cuties. If you want this, 
and you're not a current subscriber, you'll subscribe starting tomorrow. If you are already a current subscriber, you don't have to do anything. You will be in Club Create until you cancel those payments, okay? And it's $39. Um, that includes, you'll get a pack of paper, bolt of ribbon, the dots, um, shipping is included, five projects, video, and a PDF, okay? And that won't ship until uh, about the 21st of May. All right, so that's Club Create. Hopefully you guys are happy with what I chose. We're very limited, you know, with pre-order. We can't order everything. Um, and that was my favorite stuff in the whole pre-order. Now, catalogs will be coming in the mail soon. I would think in the next couple of weeks, you'll get your catalog. And then ordering starts on um, May 3rd for the new catalog. All right. All right, hopefully, <laughs> Kimberly, um, hopefully I covered everything. I'm just looking to see if I missed. You want to see Starry Sky next to Misty Moonlight? Sure, let me get that. I thought about doing that, but it's very different. Nope, that's Night of Navy. I always get Night of Navy and Misty Moonlight. Okay, so here is Starry Sky, and that's Orchid Oasis. Let me get Misty Moonlight for you. Hold on just a second. Misty Moonlight is much dull, duller. Okay, look. Not the same at all. It's greener. Looks greener to me. All right, so Starry Sky, Oasis, Orchid Oasis, Misty Moonlight, and then here's Night of Navy. Isn't it amazing how different colors can look? I mean, wow, crazy. Okay? All right, so that's that. That is that. Very exciting. Now, next week, you guys, for Facebook Live, let's see, next week is the, we're going to do again on Thursday, which will be the 14th, right? We'll do Thursday again next week. We're going to do Catch You Later from the Spring Catalog. Um, and then the following week, we'll be back to Fridays, and I'm going to do Sneak Peeks. We're going to do the Kite Stamp Set. I'm going to do all, like, in colors, okay? So that'll be two weeks from tomorrow. All right, well, let's get started um, on our projects today. Uh, last week's winner is Dawn Hutchins. Thank you for sharing my video, Dawn. Um, you are the winner of the Waves of Inspiration bundle. Dawn, I definitely have your mailing address. Um, this week, I've got two host stamp sets, Expressions of Friendship. If you would like to be entered to win, isn't that a beautiful stamp set? Those fonts are beautiful. Um, if you'd like to be entered to win, all you have to do is share the video either on Facebook or YouTube, and I will pick two winners next Thursday, okay? All right, we are ready to go. If you haven't joined me for Facebook Friday before, I have to straighten my sign because it'll drive me crazy. Um... If you haven't joined me before, welcome. Um, every week I pick a product. This week we're doing the Home and Garden Bundle from the current spring mini catalog. Um, I've got three projects planned. There is a free PDF over on my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com. It has the measurements and supply list, as well as all of those things that I just talked about are here. There is a host code associated with today. If you would like to order between now and Monday at midnight and you use that host code, I'll send you today's make and takes for free next week. And they look like this. <coughs> Excuse me. They come um, in a little package and they're free. I send them to you for free. You will need the home and garden bundle and ink and adhesive. I don't do any stamping for you. That's just a little thank you tag at the beginning, but everything else you need will be there. Any die cuts or embellishments or whatever will be there for you. And uh, the cutoff for that is Monday at midnight. Now, if you decide to order a big order and your order is over $150, don't use the host code. You're going to get stamp and rewards, and I'm still going to send you the make and takes for free. Okay. I think we are ready to go. Let me get my first little tray over here. Thanks for sharing, guys. I really do appreciate that. And you know, it's funny. When I go back to pick a winner, I try to scroll through all the comments. And there's like, I don't know, six, 700 comments. And Facebook never wants to show me the where you write shared. It's hard to find them. I guess it thinks I don't want to see those. But Facebook, I want to see those. Anyhow, okay. We're gonna make just a basic card first. I've got some fancy things coming up, but first we're just gonna make kind of this basic card. I wanna show you how adorable this set is. And it has these dies 
that are really kind of cool too that I don't think you may not necessarily realize um, what they have, what they can do. Um, I'm, pu I'm pulling this paper. This is the Bloom Where You Are Planted designer series paper from the current annual catalog. It's the one that went with the plants that everybody went crazy over. You know, it has the brick wall. This paper is 12 by 12 and it looks like this. So when you cut your paper, um, this has, this is great for like a card front. You can get six card fronts out of this piece. But when I cut this, I'm just, I mean, I guess you could cut a whole piece, but I'm, you want to use this section right here. So it looks kind of like a garden wall, maybe, you know, with vines growing up. And then we've got a brick wall here. So that's, you know, if you're going to cut your paper, think about, you know, if you cut right here, would it really look the same? <laughs> it wouldn't look the same. Now, I, full disclosure, things are selling out. There is a stamp that I'm using on the last project that has, or the, yeah, the last project that has sold out since I used it to design this card. So if something is sold out, I apologize. I don't think this paper is sold out. The last I looked, it was not. I don't have any ink pads. What's happening? Where's all my, where are all my things? Hold on just a second. I filmed all these videos yesterday. I filmed like seven videos yesterday. It was crazy. And so things may not be where they are supposed to be. There will be a clean recording of all of these over my YouTube channel if you wanna come back and just watch a quick video. All right, we're gonna stamp the shovel and the rake in Memento. I went to Home Depot last week specifically to get a Home Depot gift card because I think this set is perfect for a Home Depot gift card. And I have a bonus video for a gift card holder coming up later on. Um, probably, maybe tomorrow. So we have to be on the lookout for that. All right, so we're gonna color just the handle part right here with its smoky slate. And I'm not gonna actually co color this part right here because we're gonna cut that out from silver foil. Um, the dies have special dies for the silver parts, which I think is pretty clever. All right, crumb cake, crumb cake handle. You know what, I don't like the light. Let's use the dark. Today, so last night I had to take my daughter to basketball practice and I took my computer. This is evening evergreen. Took my computer to work in the car and I at one point kind of had to when we were driving there, kind of had to slam on my brakes. You know how that happens? And my computer went sailing. <laughs> and it freaked me out as it does. But then it was fine. It was working fine while I worked in the car. Well, then today, about two hours ago, as I was trying to get this blog post up and going, my computer wouldn't turn on. So I was a little freaked out. But I finally got it on. I don't know if it... I don't know, but... Hopefully the blog post is okay. Hopefully everything is working like it should. That is so stressful when you are trying to get ready for something like this and you need your computer and it won't turn on. All right, cinnamon cider, where did you go? My stamp pad is missing, here it is. Cinnamon cider, you guys, I've decided. It's my favorite color. It's my favorite retiring ink color. It was hard to make a choice, but it's definitely my favorite. It's the color of this, this brick wall right here. I'm gonna stamp this. I don't know if you guys have seen this paper. I actually didn't even notice it in the annual catalog until I saw someone use it recently on a card. It's linen paper. It looks like material, um, but it's, I mean, it's paper. It feels like material on the top and paper on the back. So we're gonna just cut out like a little sign um, from that to hang on our card. Um, so this is a stitched rectangle we're gonna use for that. We've got the shovel, whoa. We've got the shovel and the rake. Then I've got silver foil. And you can see here, we've got the this part of the shovel. Does that have a name, that part of the shovel? I mean, I'm sure it does, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, that part of the shovel, we're cutting out of silver foil. These weird things, which kind of look like aliens, I didn't know what they were. They are the little hangers where you would hang your rake and shovel and stuff in your maybe your garage or your shed. So we're going to cut that out of silver foil. And then I've got a piece of cinnamon cider here. And we're going to cut out this part of it, um, the little bar. 
from cinnamon, cinnamon cider. Okay, I'm reading your comment. So Terry says a spade, but isn't this whole thing called a spade? Or is that also called a spade, that part of the shovel? Someone else said blade. Nancy, you think it's a blade? Hmm. I'm sure it has an official name, but I am not a gardener at all. So I don't know. I'm not sure. And you know what I have found in the past is that things are called different things in different areas. So I might call it something and you might call it something like that little, the little shovel. I've heard it called a spade and I've heard it called a trowel. And I don't know. I don't know. Either way, I don't use it very often. <laughs> I am not a gardener. I have a couple plants that I can keep alive on my porch and that is it. I'm just, I'm not motivated to be a gardener. My mom's a great gardener. She's got a beautiful garden. All right, so now let's see. Can we get these all on here like this? We've got a new magnetic platform coming in the new catalog. Hallelujah. All right, let's go slowly. Yeah, you guys, I don't know. I'm not sure. You call it the big shovel. I call the big shovel a spade. You do, Cynthia, really. The small one is a hand trowel. Okay, Carla. Silver part of the big shovel is a blade. Hmm. Oh, Han is from England. She says the small one is a trowel, big one a spade. Okay, okay. Seems like you guys know. You know more than, than I do about this. So it seems like we have a consensus. Blade, spade, <laughs> trowel. We could call it the digger. It digs dirt. I don't know. I don't know. Something I don't use very often. All right, let's get all of our pieces. All of our pieces. Now, this die cuts out three of those little alien looking things. <laughs> um, but we're only going to use one. We're only going to use one. So you can save the rest for later. All right. Now I have a piece of garden green cardstock and we're gonna put our little garden vines at the top right there. And then we'll take our little brick wall. Now you have to cut your brick wallpaper the right way too, because you don't, well, I mean, I, I mean, I guess your bricks might go that way, but probably more likely to go this way. And it looks like my piece is a little bit too big, doesn't it? Okay, let's cut it. Let's cut it. All right, I think it needs to be about three and seven eighths. Yes, there we go. All right, and we're gonna put the little cinnamon cider wood, wood bar right across there. Okay, and then we're gonna take this. I always seem to put it too far to the right. So let's see where this needs to go. I'm gonna hang that on the little hook. Okay, right there. And then this, the, the blade, the spade, the whatever goes on to our shovel like that. Isn't that cute? I just love that it, it looks more, you know, realistic. All right, let's turn these over and put dimensionals on the back. Got one there, one there, and I'm sliding that around because it's not dry. I keep thinking I hear my dog barking, but she's not here. She's at the groomer. And she's ready to be picked up, they called. And she's probably sitting there like, where is my mother? She doesn't like going. All right, we're gonna crisscross these. So I'm gonna put one like that and one kind of over like that. Now for this one, we're gonna get a piece of this twine. This is, um, what's it called? fan baker's twine because it's from the your biggest fan and that's actually too big you just need a teeny tiny piece like an inch and a half 
And I'm gonna take my, take your pick tool. I'm gonna get a glue dot. I'm gonna get that and stick it on there and then stick it on there like that. Okay, and then get another glue dot and stick that on like that, okay? Just to get it to stay there. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on here and we're gonna hang it on the little hanger. Now this sentiment, thanks for helping me grow. I immediately think of teachers. Um, see, look at that, that's so cute hanging on there. So, you know, if you need a teacher card, this is the perfect sentiment. Thanks for helping me grow. Now, this could also go, see how it's hanging on there? This could also go um, for, you know, I mean, anybody who's helped you, anybody who helped your child, grandmother, aunt, you know, Cub Scout leader, I don't know. Um, I just really think that that's a good sentiment. All right, I'm going to tie a teeny tiny bow so that it looks like it has a little bow at the top there. I need to clean my scissors, they are gunky. And then we're gonna get another glue dot and put that right there. All right, all right. Oh, I also cut out a teeny tiny heart from can you guess it? My favorite set of dies that we use every single week. Give it a whirl dies. And it's um, Evening Evergreen. And we're gonna put that right there on the rake. Because I mean, a rake needs a heart, does it not? Right? I think it does. Because when you're raking, you're probably not very happy. We have big oak trees here in South Texas and they lose their leaves right now, this time of year, like late March. And I saw my neighbor, she, her whole yard is covered in oak trees and she's raking, raking, raking. I thought, ugh. All right, there you go. What do you guys think? That's pretty easy. It's a pretty easy card. Pretty easy and cute. I think that paper is just perfect. This paper, um, the... Um, Oh, what's the other paper in the spring catalog that has all the leaves on it? I'm suddenly drawing a blank. Not abstract beauty. It's, I don't know. I can't think of it. Somebody will tell us. That paper would go well with this set as well. Okay, next, we're going to get a little messy. We're going to do a little bit of watercoloring. I love to watercolor, you guys. You know that. So we're gonna do a little bit of watercoloring and we're gonna use several punches. So let me show you the card that we're gonna make. We're gonna make this little leafy background and I'm gonna show you how to make this. It looks kind of like, um, like a, you know, a mound of dirt that you're getting ready to dig in. Isn't that cute? I think it is. <laughs> okay, let's do our watercolor background first. Normally, I, we use watercolor paper. And uh, this time, we're gonna use shimmer white. Uh, if you try to watercolor on our regular white paper, um, it's not gonna be very pretty. It's gonna pill the paper. And uh, so your two choices are watercolor paper and our shimmer white. So I'm gonna use shimmer white today just because we always use the watercolor paper and I wanted to show you that you can use the shimmer white. Um, this is Granny Apple and garden green and i'm gonna just add a little bit of water here like this be careful because it's splatters i'm gonna get our paper nice and wet and we're gonna let those we're gonna let those colors run now i'm gonna get my water painter which already has color in it from the last time mix these up the first time you do this you're brush might have a lot of color on it so you kind of want to dab it off and then just kind of drop color onto your paper and you can use watercolor paper if you want it doesn't matter you're going to have more of tech a texture if you use watercolor paper 
All right, and let's do our granny apple, which is a little more limey green. So you're just gonna do this all over. Let the colors kind of run together. I like to kind of drip water from my brush. And you can do this, let it dry, do it some more, let it dry until you get the desired color of intensity that you like. The other thing that you can do that you guys know I love to do is get your salt and sprinkle some of that kosher salt on there. That's gonna add some texture. All right, so you're gonna set that aside and let it dry. Now, I had did this one and I think I went overboard. <laughs> I did like four different layers, so now it's just all kinds of blend. And I will tell you that if you add a lot of water, the color kind of separates. And so I have some yellow on here too now, which is kind of cool. But you also can take this and just kind of splatter, you know, like we do with the blend sometimes. That just kind of adds in some more texture like that, right? Just a big, fun, messy watercolor background. All right, so now let me clean up this and I'll show you. We're gonna take our punches and we're just gonna punch out a bunch of leaves, a bunch of foliage from this really cool abstract Jackson Pollock <laughs> looking painting. All right, I, I think that the more color and texture, the better. Now you have several choices here. You've got, actually the first card I made, I just used the new bow punch. But then when I was getting ready for the video, I was like, well, we could use this punch too. This is the, what's it called? I gotta look, Sp Sprig punch. And it's on the last chance list, which also means it's on sale for $10.80. All right, so if you don't have the Sprig punch, you need it. You need to get it. So see how those are gonna look all just weird and funky and different. They're all gonna be different, which is what we're kind of going for, okay? So then I think I'll come over here with these. I have several different shapes. I like when the water does that. That really gives us some kind of cool texture. So I'm gonna make sure I get that, that little one. We'll just go around punching out. We probably won't need all of these, but we can get as many as we want. Ooh, look at that one. That one looks really pretty. See, the paper looks kind of gross, but when you punch the shapes out, they look awesome. Okay. Let's get all of that off and we'll do, let's do a couple more of these. No paper shall go wasted. Hmm, one more little one right here. All right, so now we've got all those gorgeous leaves, right? And depending on how much color you add, how many layers you add, depends on how dark your leaves are gonna be. I think I did like three layers this time. Um, which is much darker, you can already see, much darker than that. All right, let's make this part now. We need to stamp two things. We need to stamp, hold on, we need that for something else. We don't wanna use that. We're gonna stamp the sentiment and the spade slash trowel slash, I don't know, what do you call this? What do you guys call this? hand shovel, <laughs> whatever you wanna call it, we're gonna stamp that. And we're gonna stamp the same sentiment because I love it. Thanks for helping me grow. There's several sentiments in this set that you could use. There's some Father's Day things, some dad, a man who can do anything, that kind of thing, which is cool too. All right, let's see, I'm gonna color the handle real red just to kind of give us a pop of color. And I'm not going to cut out the spade blade part of this one. I'm just gonna color it with smoky slate, okay? 
And we're gonna use the cloud punch to cut out the sentiment. Thanks for helping me grow. Okay, and then we've got two dies here. This is from the ornate layers, not stitch rectangles, the ornate layers, the long skinny rectangle. We're gonna cut that out from um, balmy blue, but we're gonna cut a little hill first, okay? So let me swing this over here. And the first thing we're gonna do is do our little hill. Right? I don't know why I keep putting that clear plate under there, because that's not where I look for it. All right, so now, that was from the basic border dies. We're gonna take this, and we're gonna adhere it to this like that. And then we'll get that rectangle and we're gonna cut it out like that so that we have just a little bit of that stitched hill. And then we'll cut out the little hand shovel, spade trowel thingy. <laughs> I should have never asked because now I really don't know what to call it. Like that, don't lose your die. And so then there's our little mound of dirt. Okay, now the fun part. We're just gonna glue it all down. I've got a piece of basic white um, cardstock. And I'm gonna take dimensionals and I'm just gonna put two right in the middle like that. And we'll put that there like that. Let's make sure it's centered, like that. Mm, it's still too far over to the right. Like, well, now I'm overthinking it. Okay, there. Now grab your Tombow and your leaves. And we're just gonna start gluing them in. And you just kinda wanna lift it and put them under there. Ooh, I don't really like that one. That one doesn't have a lot of texture. Some of them, if they're gonna bump into that dimensional, you're gonna need to trim off that, that stem. Ooh, that's my favorite one. We'll put that one in the middle at the top. Okay. So let's put that like that right there. I don't like that one. Let's do this one. And you want them all to just kind of be different. Well, I just smeared that glue. So we're gonna to need to put this one right there in front to cover that up. <laughs> all right, here's one. And I feel like this one needs to come down here like that. And ooh, that's a good one too. Lots of texture on that one. These, this uh, sprig punch always look like reindeer antlers to me maybe i maybe i've seen them used as that and that's why i always think of that all right so we're just going to continue to just kind of plug these in in different faith you know some are leaning to the left some are leaning to the right like that and like that it's kind of a wild garden late summer Things are blooming, things are crazy. Here in late summer, everything's brown and dead, but <laughs> where you guys live, you probably have beautiful green in the, towards the end of summer. All right, we'll do one more and then I'll stop, but you can just keep going and going and going until you like what you have. Now, the little shovel, I'm gonna put just a little bit of glue on the back and I'm gonna tuck it in behind the hill like that. Like it's, you know, shoved down into the dirt. I feel like I'm talking to myself, where are my comments? And then we'll get our little cloud, put that there. And now let's embellish it. I've got Somewhere on this table, some linen twine, linen thread. 
Uh, we'll use crumb cake twine. I'm gonna fold it in half like this, and I'm gonna tie a bow. Is the twine, it was here. I don't know what happened to it. The linen thread, that's okay. This looks almost the exact same. So I folded it in half and tied a double bow. And we'll get a glue dot. And I take your pick tool and we'll put that right there. Let's fluff up our bow a little bit. No, you need to go down, not up. Behave. There we go. And then I felt like we just needed a little bit of color in there. So I've got some sequins that we're just gonna kind of sporadically add little pops of color to our foliage like that, all right? And then last but not least, we're just gonna put it down on our garden green card base. So, you know, creating that that um, colorful background, you know, you can create several of those and then just punch out leaves from it. And then you could just make a bunch of cards. Look at the difference in color. This definitely has more granny apple and this one has more garden green. You can see more yellow in the granny apple. All right, there you go. Card two. I love it. I would say it's my favorite, but I know the next one is my very favorite. So this is my second favorite. <laughs> I'm not supposed to have favorites, but I do. All right, last card's gonna take us a little more time. It's a little tedious, but I think we can get it done. All right, now, thanks for the hearts. You guys are sweet. Now, if you're on Instagram, the Stampin' Up! Um, concept artists have been doing a and a creative challenge called there it's a hashtag I always do that hashtag because I saw Sarah Douglas do that one time um hashtag creative no concept art creative challenge I believe it's what it's called and they had color a color challenge and so I use those colors to create a little rainbow of shovels cute right I mean come on the colors are so fun they really are. All right, well, let me tell you what the colors are. Um, one of them is retiring, and that would be, let me get out the ink pads, and I'm going to open them as we go, okay? Uh, Misty Moonlight. I know that's some of y'all's favorite. Balmy Blue. That's a subtle. Um, then we've got Old Olive, an old standby from the mm, Regals now. Pumpkin Pie from the Regals. Ooh, and I got a new... I got a new pumpkin pie ink pad and I forgot to get it out for today. Um, and then pale papaya, which is an in color that's not yet leaving. All right, so now we're gonna get the cardstock of each of those colors, the same colors. See, I had pulled Night of Navy. I always get Night of Navy and Misty Moonlight confused, but this is too dark. Misty Moonlight, pale papaya, pumpkin pie, and balmy blue. All right, so now we're gonna take our shovel and we're gonna need our chamois. And some of these, like if you stamp balmy blue, you don't really have to clean it before you go to misty moonlight, right? Because it's a light blue to a dark blue. But if you're gonna go to your green next, you do need to clean it. So old olive, clean, clean, clean. And then we can do the same thing here. We can do pale papaya. Ooh. And then old olive without cleaning. Okay. Very good. Now I've got the Stampin' Blends in all of those colors. And we're going to color the handle of each one with their dark Stampin' Blend. We're also going to color a pearl while we have our blends opened. Did you know you can color your pearls with your Stampin' Blends to make them any color that you want? You can. I'm gonna color that part right there. Okay, misty, and then balmy. Right there. So these little shovels are gonna be like a monochromatic shovel. If you use the light um, Stampin' Blend, 
it's not going to be dark enough on the cardstock. So you want to use the dark. And it does dry a little bit lighter than it looks at first. Okay, old olive. Old olive pearl. Oop, I just colored over that. I couldn't even see it. Let's do that again. This balmy blue is very light. Either that or it's running dry. There we go. Now I can see it. All right, pumpkin pie. We shall do pumpkin pie. I don't think I would have put these colors together myself. Um, that's why I love a good creative challenge because it kind of pushes you to use colors that you may not use together, but they go beautifully together. They've done four, four or five of these creative challenges. If you do search the hashtag concept art creative challenge, you'll find it. Um, Nikki says, new in colors, are there two new purples? Yes, Nikki, and I showed them all at the beginning, so when I'm done, go back and watch a recording. I compared them to um, some other colors, too. Um, the thing is, they look different compared, to, depending on what color you hold them up next to, and the light, and, you know, all that. I think they're purples, but they're bluish purples, so, you know. Okay, so we're gonna run these through and then we're gonna cut out a flower from each color as well. So this is gonna take me a few minutes. I will tell you guys, I told you the soccer drama last week, how my daughter made the soccer team and she's never played soccer in her life. And then I was reading y'all's comments and now I'm scared to death. <laughs> she's the goalie, apparently that's kind of scary. She said she's not scared. She's scared to dive, but she's not scared of the ball coming to her face. We'll see, because today is our first game. They've had three days of practice. <laughs> and she says she's the only goalie. The other goalie already quit. So I'm not sure how this is going to go. She had a basketball practice till 9 o'clock last night. Soccer game this afternoon. And then a basketball tournament all weekend. This is why I have a one sport rule, sisters. That's why I tell them. You can only play one sport at a time. How I got sucked into letting her do soccer at the same time. Well, my mom calls her the squeaky wheel, you know, third child. That's how they get what they want. She's a uh, dripping water. That's what my mom calls her, dripping water. She just drip, 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 drips until your friend like, fine. Do I have any third kids on here? How many of you are third kids? You know, from the moment she was born, she figured out, okay, if I'm gonna get, you know, attention, if I'm gonna get what I want, I gotta make a lot of noise and not give up. <laughs> and that's what she does. But you know what, she's an athlete and I hate to deny her. We'll see, hopefully this is the only soccer season. <laughs> we'll see. All right, we're going to put a little um, flower on each shovel. I don't know if you guys were able to see that. There's a little flower on each shovel. And so I pulled out this die right here. This is the hydrangea die. And um, it has all these petals on one die, which I love. Because then you can cut them all out at one time. You can use any flower you want. And I'm just going to line them up like this and see if we can get them all cut with one swoop of the die, okay? The only problem is that one might be cut in half, but we'll see. All right, let's see if we can do it. Oh, Robin, yes, Robin's got three girls. You know, <laughs> drip, 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 right? Yep, Yale or jail, I say, with that one. She can, she can talk her way into or out of pretty much everything and anything. All right, so I think I'm gonna have to cut one more Misty Moonlight flower because it got cut in half. That's the only problem with that. Let's see if we can get it done. Like that. Did I go all the way? I don't know, I can't tell. There we go. I'm supposed to be attending on tour online right now. 
Those of you that have demonstrators, you know what I'm talking about. That's all right. I can be late. I can be a little bit late. Plus, I, I still have to go pick up my dogs. All right, we've got a card here in the middle, a card, a piece of cardstock that's gonna go in the middle. I've already cut this stitched, not stitched, scalloped rectangle. And we're gonna put um, the stitched greenery here on that rectangle in the middle. Okay. Let's see if I can get it to come off. There we go. Don't you love that die? All right, we're almost there, but we have one more complicated thing to do. This is a complicated card. We're gonna use our Stamparatus, and I believe that this stamp set, no, I not. I don't believe, I know. This stamp set, unfortunately, has sold out. All things fabulous. And the sentiment says, I thought it was perfect for this card. It says, you make the flowers smell sweeter and the sun shine brighter. Now we're gonna stamp it in several colors and then we're gonna cut it apart. In order to do that, we have to stamp the two lines separately. So you want your handy dandy post-it tape, okay? We're gonna mask off the bottom and the word sweeter like that. And we're gonna grab the Misty Moonlight. Now you could also use your markers if you want. Your stamp and write markers will do this. Let's take off the tape and stamp. I didn't clean this. I did not clean this from the last time. So let's see. Oh, all right, maybe I did because it worked. All right, so now let's mask off again the bottom. And this time we're gonna mask off the sentence and leave the word sweeter. And we'll grab our pumpkin pie and pull the tape off and stamp. All right, so we've got one sentence, you make the flower smell sweeter. I'm gonna move the paper up now, we do need to clean our stamp this time because we don't want that top sentence to stamp where we're gonna stamp the second sentence. Otherwise, they'll be too close, too close to cut apart. All right, so now we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna mask off the top sentence and the tape gets the ink on it and doesn't dry, so be careful. Get it on your fingers. All right, so now we'll do the second sentence. The misty moonlight. And stamp. Pick it up, it keeps sliding. There we go. Now um, we need the post-it tape one more time. I know, some of you are like, that's really a lot of work. Sometimes it is, and it's worth it. All right, you know what? I'm gonna cover that up with more tape because I don't wanna get that on my ink pad. Pale papaya. Mm, I have a feeling I'm gonna get ink on this ink pad, but we'll worry about that later. Peel all that off. Make sure your hands are clean and, oh, I don't, know, I don't know, I don't know. It looks almost like I didn't. Okay, let's look, let's try, let's try. It looks like I didn't get the B. I didn't, darn it. Okay, well, just hold on a minute. We gotta fix it, we gotta do it right. Should have done it right the first time. Got plenty of post-it tape. Okay, one more time with a pale papaya. I'm not gonna worry about getting ink on it. And now we should have a bee and we should have everything that we need. Yes, you make the flowers smell sweeter and the sun shine brighter. Okay, grab your trimmer, chop, 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 and then we're ready to put it all together. 
chop, chop. So tomorrow my kids have the day off for Fiesta. Fiesta is our big San Antonio holiday, no school. And so that means they get two Fridays in a row off. Lucky them. Lucky teachers too. I remember loving those two Fridays in April when I was a teacher. Because that's about the time you need some days off for sure. All right, let's get the rest of our pieces. We're going to take that stitched scalloped rectangle. It's not stitched. I keep saying it's stitched. The scalloped basic white rectangle. Mary, the tape is from Amazon. And I have a link. There's a the top of my blog. There's a button that says shop. And in that drop down menu, it says Amazon links. And you'll find it there if you want to look for it. It's called post-it tape. All right, now I'm just gonna arrange these so I can kind of eyeball it. You wanna go up, down, up, down. Okay, so we're gonna do one, and then we'll do a mini on the bottom. Actually, I meant to start in the middle. You really do wanna start in the middle so you get everything spaced out the right way. Okay. And we'll do that one and then let's do this one on the end and we can space the others in between like that and now pumpkin pie if you guys are looking for color inspiration make sure you search that hashtag creative concept art creative challenge is, am I getting that right? I don't know if Cindy's on here. Um, you'll find a lot of really cool stuff. And then if you make a project, you can use that hashtag with your project. And then everybody who searches that hashtag will see your project too. All right, so there we go. We've got them in order. Let's put our flowers on. One, two, three, four, five. And I am out of sticky putty on my take your pick tool, which was somewhere right here. Hmm. Am I just looking at it? All right. Well, I don't know where it went. I'm going to have to use my fingers the old fashioned way. And it's going to be hard to pick them up. It's probably on that tray over there. I don't see it. Hmm. All right. It's so quiet. It seems so strange that the dogs aren't here. Usually they're in and out, in and out. Okay. Now get your, I guess we'll use these. You're going to get those pearls that you colored and stick those right in the middle of each flower. Really? You should wait for those flowers to dry so they don't slide around on you. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm making it difficult. I'm on the struggle bus. There we go. And Misty Moonlight. No stick. Come on, Misty, do what you're supposed to do. There we go. Oh man, I made a mess of the glue. You guys know I'm not good with the glue. That's all right. All right, a little, few little many dimensionals on our sentiment. And if you don't wanna get crazy with the sentiment like I did, just stamp it on the inside of the card <laughs> in one color. I don't know why I felt to me, felt led to make this such a complicated card. I mean, I love it, but I got a little crazy with the complicated steps. There are ways to simplify it for sure. All right, last but not least, we're gonna put it on our card base and then we're done. I wanna make this card in different colors. I wanna try different colors. I should have, if I'd had time, I could have used all the concept art creative challenge color combinations. That would have been cool to see. 
All right, now I did want to add a linen thread bow, but as we know, the linen thread is not here. So we'll use this. Now I did make this card with the ladders. I'm going to show you that in just a second. The ladders are much bigger. So your card has to be much bigger. And I'll show you in just a second what I did. All right, little bow right there. Oh, so cute. This card is for someone special because that's a lot of work. All right, now look, here are the ladders. See the size difference? The ladders are too big for a four and a fourth by five and a half. So this is a five by seven. The only difference, look, I kept those. I just kept that as one. I didn't like it like that over here for some reason. I can't remember why because I think it covered up too much of the shovel. But I did a five by seven, and I couldn't use the scalloped rectangle either. So I just did um, a white rectangle. And you can put that in a five by seven envelope. Isn't that cute? The ladders were cute. The ladders were harder to get straight too, because it kind of, your eyes kind of get confused by the slanting lines. Okay, so there is what we did today. Now, I, have, I told you I had two bonus projects for you. Um, one is a fun fold that I used that sold out paper. So then on the video, I made it with that paper. That video will be coming out in the next couple days. And then the Home Depot gift card holder, I've got that too. That will be coming out on my blog in the next couple days. And that's that. So if you guys want this project this project and this project make sure you get your order in by monday at midnight and i will send it to you for free next week as a thank you for your order all right you guys that's it for today thanks for hanging with me <laughs> that last one was a long one we should have we should have started with that one um remember next week we'll be live on thursday with three catch -a later projects and then the following week will be friday again back um, back to Friday. All right. Have a great weekend, you guys. And let me know if you have any questions and I will see you next week. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.